As someone who primarily plays and makes YouTube videos about Valve games, I don't really know that much about Roblox. I know it's one of the most popular video games in the entire world. Uh, I know that when I was 10, I played this map on it where you could blow up characters from The Simpsons with explosives, and I know that for some reason it hosted a virtual concert experience with a high-resolution lifelike face scan of a uh, rapper Little Nas X. But me and Roblox never really crossed paths in a major way. I always stuck to my little corner of the internet where we played Counter-Strike, Half-Life, and Left 4 Dead, and let the good people over at Roblox do, uh, whatever the hell it is they do over there. And awesome Huggy Wuggy, this is a me, but like, I don't want to use it, and Blue, and, uh, I mean, um, Kissy Missy. If I can be honest, I've always viewed Roblox as a platform primarily for children that I, as a grown-ass man, pretty much have no business playing on. But earlier this month, curiosity struck me, and I decided to take a look at what kind of games people were playing on Roblox these days. And, kind of surprisingly, I discovered that it actually has a very large community of people dedicated to remaking Valve games. Basically, every major Valve title has been recreated in Roblox in one way or another, which is an interesting phenomenon to me, as I've always felt like the Valve community and the Roblox community were pretty far apart from each other. But hey, you know me, alright? Hearing that there's an entire platform out there that is home to a seemingly infinite number of knockoff Valve games is basically all that I need to hear to finally get on board. Today, I'm heading over to Roblox.com, signing up for an account, uh, making my avatar look as ridiculous as possible, and digging through millions of user-created games to play some of the best and some of the worst Valve games remade in Roblox. What are cell phones for? Are they for calling your loved ones and telling them how much they mean to you? No. They're actually scientifically designed for playing the sponsor of today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. A game with hundreds of champions to collect, intense PvE boss battles, and 80 million downloads and counting. Today, Raid has tasked me with the ultimate challenge, picking through their arsenal of 750 plus champions and choosing three to kiss, marry, and kill. Right off the bat, I'm, I'm kissing Queen Eva because, I mean, look at her. I'm marrying Gala Longbraids because I'm pretty sure she would just beat up anyone who ever criticizes me. And I'm killing Gorgorab because he commands a giant army of the undead. Make sure that you log on before November 10th so you can delve into Raid's haunted graveyard for a chance to win in-game items and even real-life prizes. All you gotta do is download Raid Shadow Legends with links below, copy your in-game player ID, and then head over to RaidYard.Plarium.com before the 10th for your chance to win everything from an epic and legendary Halloween-themed Raid Champion to Amazon gift cards with a total value of $20,000. Even if you already play Raid, you can head on over there anyways to find a promo code that you can use to earn a very special in-game gift. With all of this wacky stuff and more coming to Raid, now is the best time to get into the game. Click my link in the description or scan my fancy little QR code here to get special bonuses available only through my link. We're talking an epic champion Drake from the Lizardman faction, and also other useful stuff like energy refills and XP boosters. Once you're in and stomping on your enemies, come find me under the name uh, Ratlobber Fart. If you're fast enough, you just might be able to join my clan. Hit that link in the description, and I will see you on the battlefield. I figured there was no better place to start looking at all the weird remakes Roblox had to offer than all the way back at the beginning. Half-Life the primordial ooze of basically every Valve game we've come to know and love over the years. I'll be honest, playing a Robloxified version of either Half-Life game is not something I have ever in my life seeked out, and the front page of the website wasn't exactly giving me hope that they would be any good. Maybe this is just me being a Valve Zoomer who hasn't played Roblox in like 13 years, but I just could not get over the fact that basically every game on the homepage had a thumbnail that looked straight out of a Mr. Beast video. Grievances with Roblox aside, the word on the street as far as I knew was that the very best Half-Life experience you could get in Roblox was with these two games, Half-Blocks and Half-Blocks 2. Two separate titles that are pretty commonly hailed as some of the best fan recreations of either Half-Life game. So I bit the bullet and started up Half-Blocks 1. I was immediately greeted by a one-to-one -one replica of the intro sequence from the original Half-Life. At first glance, it seemed like every texture and every model had been ported over into Roblox's engine, and the movement was feeling, you know, sorta half-lifey. Pretty much the only tell that this was even Roblox was the blocky-ass Barney that I saw on my ride over, 
desperately trying not to be late to his job. And I guess also uh, Roblox G-Man was staring at me at one point, like a little, like a little freak. After that long ass intro sequence, I finally made it into the Black Mesa reception area where I got to truly experience the frankly uh, bad movement that this game had. It was like a weird mix of 2008 Roblox movement and 1998 Gold Source movement, which I probably, I mean, I probably don't have to tell you, that feels not very good. Beyond that though, I'd say I was pretty impressed with the visual presentation of the game. None of the textures or models looked out of place, the lighting was pretty good, and in some cases the ambient occlusion made it look better than the original Half-Life did. Whoever was behind this game actually did a pretty good job of keeping in all those little details that made Half-Life 1's intro so special in the first place. You'll be able to find G-Man talking to one of the scientists, blow up the casserole inside of the kitchen area, and even annoy the hell out of two guys who are just uh, trying, to, trying to take a poop in the bathroom. This part in particular actually kind of made me realize that this game's scale was way, way off. I'm not sure if my freak of a player model was too big or the map was just too small, but basically every room was super, super tiny in comparison to the actual game. Maybe this is just me being naive when it comes to Roblox and not understanding the work that goes into making something like this, but I was fully expecting the game to be playable at least halfway through. I was ready to play through Half-Life 1 in Roblox from start to finish and tell you what I thought of it, but after the Resonance Cascade sequence, the game is pretty much over. Which kind of bummed me out because it was really promising and I would have loved to see how they recreated actual Half-Life 1 style combat in Roblox, but the game was over and didn't really have anything else to offer, so it was time to boot up the much anticipated sequel to Half-Blox 1, Half-Blox uh, 2. Immediately upon loading into Half Blocks 2, and after getting the ASMR treatment from stupid ass Roblox G Man, I was insanely impressed already with just how accurate the game was to the original Source version. It's one thing to recreate Half Life 1 inside of Roblox, but to recreate Half Life 2, a game that still looks pretty damn good for its age, and then add your own artistic choices regarding real time shadows and stuff, is just really impressive. I hopped off my government-issued train, uh, made my way to the rest of the classic Half-Life 2 intro, and proceeded to hit the Soy Jack face every single time I saw a remade version of a scripted sequence from the original game. Don't drink the water. They put something in it to, to make you forget. I don't even remember how I got here. The attention to detail was really shining through here. Almost nothing was missing from this part of the game. It was all still there, just represented in its Roblox form, rather than its 2004 Source Engine form. I tried to b-hop over to Roblox Nova Prospect, got stopped by a Roblox Metro Cop, taken to a Roblox back room for questioning, and then met up with my old pal, Roblox Barney. It was at this point I got bored listening to the Dr. Kleiner dialogue for the 900th time and started just stacking shit on top of other shit, which made me realize one, that this game actually had a physics engine, and that two, this game actually had a good physics engine. I wouldn't even say it just does a good job at copying Half-Life 2's physics, it really doesn't, but it does do a good job at being a physics engine, period. Objects have weight and believably interact with each other without glitching out all over the place, and it feels a lot closer to the physics interactions in Half-Life Alex than it does the ones in Half-Life 2. After that though, the game pretty much progresses like normal. You stack a bunch of crates on top of each other so you can jump out of a window, get harassed by a metro cop who forces you to pick up a can like the soy boy that you are, and right after you exit the train station and get that picturesque view of City 17, the demo is already pretty much over. What Half Blocks 1 and Half Blocks 2 are not are full remakes of the two Half-Life games. They're not even really actually games to be honest, but they are both very impressive little slices of easily the most iconic parts of the Half-Life series. But this is me we're talking about, and I'm over here getting bored because it's been like an hour since I've been able to shoot at stuff, and, I, and if I don't get to shoot at something soon, I might just start freaking out. Luckily, half Blocks 2, for whatever reason, comes with a lightweight remake of Half-Life 2 Deathmatch. There's only a handful of maps, and there's no gravity gun or anything, but it's a nice little bare-bones game mode that shows off what Half-Life style combat feels like inside of Roblox. There's even a bunch of weapon skins for each gun, which is <laughs> honestly insanely out of place in Half-Life 2, and does not look very good, but I was pretty impressed with the player models, which were all different Roblox versions of the Resistance guys from the campaign. It's not the most engaging Half-Life Deathmatch experience I've ever had, but I did manage to kill a guy while I still had spawn protection on, and then and then teabag him really hard, which made him immediately quit the game, so I'd say there's a decent amount of fun to be had here. The last feature I ended up playing with in Half-Blox 2 was the Community Map feature. I didn't even know this was possible, but apparently the Roblox version of Half-Life 2 has support for community maps and mods, which is just, it's insane. 
None of them are super interesting, but I definitely have to applaud the fact that this feature even exists at all. I guess even if you put it in Roblox form, people are always going to find a way to mod the shit out of Half-Life 2. Later on, I did end up finding a game that tried to recreate Half-Life 1 deathmatch, but it was honestly just really, really bad. The maps were really weird ports of Gold Source maps, the weapon view models were just straight up insane, and for some reason there was a fist weapon instead of a crowbar. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure who thought that was a good idea. I would have loved to get gameplay of a populated lobby, but it seems like this game has just been totally abandoned, and there was no way I was going to force anyone that I care about to hop on Roblox Half-Life Deathmatch with me. So, uh, moving on. My next stop on the Valve Roblox train was the world of Team Fortress 2. This is actually the only genre of Roblox remake that I was familiar with before making this video. It's pretty much impossible to have not seen gameplay of at least one of the many TF2 remakes that Roblox is home to, and there's no question that this one, Typical Colors 2, is the most popular one ever made. I would have loved to jump right in and play it first, but I felt like to truly appreciate the many different TF2 experiences that Roblox offers, it'd be a good idea to start smaller. So before we play the big one, we're going to explore a lesser known TF2 remake. Era Warfare a Roblox remake of TF2 that consolidates the nine classes from the original game into five classes, all based on a different era of humanity. The Scout is still basically just a Scout, except now he's full-on Grug status caveman. He runs around and goes Ooga Booga and is British for some reason, and has a wooden scatter gun that reminds me of the coconut gun from Donkey Kong 64. His sidearm is a wooden pistol that shoots wood, I guess, and his melee is just a straight up <laughs> nasty ass jungle club. The sniper is just as unfun to play against as ever, and now has a wooden blow dart thing and a wooden tech 9 for some reason. You can also just straight up equip a sword and shield and play him like he's a demo knight though, which makes for some pretty interesting gameplay and some pretty bad class recognition. The heavy has been mixed with the demo man and somehow that fusion resulted in an old timey cowboy guy with a massive gatling gun and a western version of the spy's revolver. And he of course has the option to replace his primary with a bunch of disgustingly overpowered grenade launcher weapons. Fortnite fucking default dance on this guy. Oh shit it's taking too long. No, 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 no. Oh my god bro I got killed by fucking Barney from Half-Life. How did that happen? That's ridiculous. Soldier is just a soldier, except he now has all the capabilities that the Pyro has, which is maybe maybe the single worst idea I've ever heard in my entire life. And finally, as if playing support wasn't bad enough, the fifth class now takes on the role of the Engineer, Medic, and Spy, all at the same time. There is an insane amount of weapons in this game, and unlike TF2, you won't have to endlessly play for months on end to hope that they'll get dropped to you. You can just head over to the in-game store in the middle of a match and spend gold coins to get basically whatever you want. Some people might consider buying weapons to be predatory since you can spend real cash on in-game currency, but you get a set amount of gold coins at the end of each match based on your performance and it's not like the grind is too insane or anything. I found myself with a pretty significant stack of money even early on into my play session. If I can be honest, my first experience with Era Warfare really wasn't that good. It felt kinda like TF2 and the maps were clearly uh, inspired by TF2, but for some reason when I tried to play it like it was TF2, I just really wasn't having that much fun. I'd be on the card as a scout, holding whatever stupid weapon I just bought from the in-game store, and something completely unpredictable would happen like a heavy sticky jumping on top of my head and owning me, or a soldier pulling up with a flamethrower and burning me to a crisp. Fundamentally, the game was just fine. It was well made, had cool cosmetics, had an interesting little swag to it, and the maps were pretty solid TF2 styled maps. But I just couldn't figure out why I wasn't having fun. Maybe it was the weird class combinations, maybe it was how bad my teammates were, or maybe it was just the way the maps were laid out. It bummed me out because I thought the wacky ass weapons were really really cool, but the actual game just wasn't gripping me the way it should have. I was getting ready to just close the game and move on to the next one when something insane happened. Like a divine sign from God himself, a random ass kid in the lobby informed me, uh, unprompted, that if I spent 120 coins on a combat axe, it would let me hit the gritty. So, so naturally I bought it and started hitting the gritty all over the place, which is, which is awesome. I can't, you can't even hate on it. That's awesome. And that gritty was maybe the most important gritty that I will ever hit. Sitting inside this weird spawn room as a Roblox soldier, doing a really uh, not funny zoomer dance, made me realize that I was playing the game wrong the entire time. 
The point of playing Era Warfare wasn't to get all sweaty and play it in the same way you would real TF2. The point was to just revel in this insane ass world where you can get backstabbed by an engineer and there's five classes running around that can use basically whatever gun you want them to and also there's a weapon you can buy that just plays the vine boom sound effect. The point was to just go nuts. And after realizing that, and taking the game a little less seriously, I started to actually have a lot of fun with Era Warfare. I was buying weapons left and right for all the five classes just to see how much they changed their respective playstyles and experimenting with a bunch of different guns. It was really fun to mess with these insane mechanics that clearly were not playtested at all, and just see what kind of wacky shenanigans transpire when you blend all the nine playable classes from TF2 into five really weird inbred classes. Era Warfare is not a perfect remake of Team Fortress 2. I wouldn't even really say it's trying to be a remake of Team Fortress 2, but it is a really fun sandbox style deviation of TF2 where there's basically no rules and you can kind of just go wild because at the end of the day, it's, it's just Roblox. And that deserves some kind of praise, I think. But what if you hated hitting the gritty, okay? What if you thought that was completely stupid and absurd? What if you wanted a Roblox experience that actually was a lot like Team Fortress 2? Well, that's where the undisputed king of Roblox TF2 comes in. Typical Colors 2. Typical Colors is a damn near perfect recreation of TF2 inside of Roblox, and it's honestly still mind-blowing, no matter how many times I hear about it. Each of the nine playable classes have been recreated pretty much perfectly, along with all of their wacky mechanics, from movement to keybinds to trimping as a demo knight on Harvest. It's so obvious that the team behind this game loves TF2, and want as many people as possible to be able to experience the utter hell that is playing a casual match. There's honestly not even a lot I can praise about Typical Colors that wouldn't just be praising TF2 directly, but it's seriously just a lot of fun, and it's nice to have a TF2 alternative that is constantly getting updated, has a bunch of fun new weapons and mechanics, and of course, has no annoying ass sniper bots. This game is definitely the gold standard when it comes to Valve game remakes in Roblox, and you'd be pretty hard pressed to find one that is of any higher quality. I'm sure all the people watching that actually play Roblox have heard this a million times before, but as someone who's an outsider to the whole thing, it really, really is insane. The art style and class recognition obviously are not going to be anywhere near Team Fortress 2's quality, but I do have to give props to the team behind this game for actually trying to come up with new characters and personas for each of the classes, rather than just ripping them off directly from the game. That takes some pretty big cojones. It's pretty interesting to see what is basically a well-maintained version of modern TF2 from some alternate universe where the game's actually still getting updates, and it definitely makes me just a little bit sad that the real TF2 is probably never going to get a substantial update ever again. Something odd that jumped out at me when I played Typical Colors was just how much better of an environment it was to someone who's new to Team Fortress. If you're new to TF2, prepare for no one to explain to you how the game works, not being able to even call for a medic, and zero idea on how to get new items or buy new hats. If you're new to Typical Colors too, you can pretty much find all of that out within an hour of booting the game up for the first time, and those features are all really well integrated into the actual experience. Is that, is that controversial to say that Typical Colors 2 offers a more welcoming experience to Team Fortress gameplay than TF2 itself does? Maybe, but it true, okay? It true. Also, this has nothing to do with the actual mechanics of the game in any way, but I love how terrible all of the voice lines for this game are. Not even, not even in a mean way, they're just really, really funny. I would say if you're someone who just straight up can't run TF2, or you're a TF2 player who just wants more TF2, Typical Colors is the superior TF2 remake. But if you're getting bored of the whole Team Fortress gameplay loop and you want something that's still kinda like it, then Era Warfare is a good twist on the old tried and true formula. Either way, between Typical Colors 2, Era Warfare, and even less fleshed out TF2 clones like Tetragon Fortress, I'm happy to see that even in the world of Roblox, Team Fortress 2 remains an insanely popular game. I am not happy to see that TF2 somehow gets more love in the Roblox community than it does by the people who made the damn thing, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> I love Left 4 Dead. It's easily one of my favorite games of all time, and I simply cannot get enough of playing knockoffs of it. Even if they're bad, and even if they're buggy or whatever, I'm never not going to enjoy other people's takes on Valve's near-perfect co-op shooter formula. Luckily, there is an abundance of Left 4 Dead clones on Roblox that I am very eager to sink my teeth into. 
I decided to start off first with a Roblox Left 4 Dead game that I've actually talked about before on this channel. One that I think I probably judged a little unfairly the first time I played it, and definitely deserves a second look. Left to Die. I think the first time I played Left to Die, I didn't really understand the work that went into making a good Roblox game, and I understood even less the standard of quality that is actually feasible to deliver in Roblox. It's very obvious that whoever is behind this really just wanted to make a good, accurate Left 4 Dead experience, and it succeeds at that in pretty much every way. The weapons are amazing and feel exactly how they should, the movement is some of the best I've ever felt in a Roblox game, and the visual presentation, especially when it comes to maps, is stupidly close to the real thing. The main campaigns do an amazing job at capturing the bluish-gray vibe from Left 4 Dead 1, and they're super detailed in just about every way. From props to in-universe branding and even special weather effects like snow, they're easily some of the best-looking maps I've seen in Roblox, period. One of the problems I had when I first played Left to Die was that the special infected were a little hard to read. That's still definitely a problem, but I don't think it's nearly as bad as I made it out to be before. You can make out their basic shape, which is probably the most important part, and they are very accurate to how you'd expect the special infected to behave. Hunters can try to pounce on you and overshoot you a little bit and miss. Smokers will lurk in the shadows, and chargers can even sideswipe you and trigger a stagger animation, temporarily stunning you. They might not be 100% accurate to the special infected in Left 4 Dead 2, but it's probably one of the best attempts I've ever seen at porting them to another game. The common infected are especially impressive, most notably in the way that they die. You can dismember them, shove them back, blow their legs off, and their physics are even accounted for in death animations, which is just as impressive in Roblox as it is in the Source engine. One of the biggest problems with the game is the campaign's actual progression and level design. That's not to say it's bad, it's just nowhere near the quality of even some of the worst official Left 4 Dead maps. But, I mean, asking a Roblox developer to put out campaign maps that are Valve quality is kind of an insane thing to do. I found that the survival mode was pretty much perfect and showed off a lot better what this game is capable of. Every single element works perfectly in this game mode, and in my opinion, it is the definitive way to play Left to Die. That's not to say the campaigns aren't fun and interesting, but the survival experience just feels a lot more polished, which makes sense because it is a much simpler game mode. Left to Die is unfortunately discontinued and won't be getting any more updates, probably ever, but I'm not ashamed to say that I was pretty much completely wrong about my initial opinion of the game. My teammates without fail have sucked every single time I've got on though, and that is something that I will stand behind. So yeah, Left to Die is definitely worth checking out, and most definitely the best Left 4 Dead experience in the entirety of Roblox. Next up, we have yet another Roblox Left 4 Dead experience that has maybe the worst name I have ever heard in my entire life. Left for Bloxen. Left for Bloxen is a Roblox game that aims to port only the versus mode over from Left 4 Dead 2, which a lot of people, uh, weird people, might consider the most important part of the multiplayer Left 4 Dead experience. Now, Quality-wise and gameplay-wise and pretty much everything-wise, Left 4 Bloxen is the exact opposite of Left to Die. What do I mean by that? I mean, uh, I mean it's pretty bad. It's not even really a proper recreation of the versus mode from Left 4 Dead, it's more like a versus sandbox. Everyone spawns in as a survivor and can choose to become an infected basically whenever they want, and if you die as either role, you'll restart at the start of the map as a survivor again, no matter if you were an infected in your last life or not. From what I could tell, there really wasn't much point to playing Left 4 Bloxen. It was kind of just walking around and seeing how the creators interpreted different special infected. If anything, it feels like a tech demo or something. The weapons are just okay, and not really anything to write home about, and playing as a special infected is also a bit boring. It's definitely cool to see someone try and recreate playing as the infected, but it is quite literally just the bare minimum experience. They work kind of like how the actual Special Infected do, but they don't have any of the unique features that makes playing as them actually fun. The smoker technically smokes, you know, bare minimum, he can shoot his tongue out. The spitter just spits a weird green circle on the ground, and the tank is just a huge guy with a lot of health that can summon a rock at any moment. This game is more of just the flavor of Left 4 Dead, you know, the, the essence of Left 4 Dead. You can kind of smell that Left 4 Dead has been here, you know, but I wouldn't say Left 4 Dead is present. It has the maps and the weapons and you can play as the special infected, but it's really not worth playing over literally any other Left 4 Dead clone on Roblox. Left to Die might not let you play as a special infected or even have a versus mode at all, but it is about 100 times more polished than this game and basically every other Left 4 Dead game on the entire website. It's a shame it won't be worked on anymore, but 
Oh well, they, they managed to get at least one coherent Left 4 Dead experience ported over into the blocky ass Lego game, and that's, I mean, that's, that's all you can really ask for, right? Counter-Strike. Maybe one of the most competitive games ever. A game that requires so much skill, finesse, and tiny accurate movements that it has people all over the world modding their peripherals, leaning really, really far back in their computer chairs, and buying stupid ass little mouse pads that probably do nothing. A game that in a million years you would never expect to be insanely popular on Roblox. For some reason there's actually a really long history of people trying to port the Counter-Strike experience over to Roblox. I remember before CSGO even came out, you know, back in ancient 1910 times when we just had Counter-Strike Source, there were a handful of these weird and honestly pretty bad Roblox games that tried to recreate the competitive aspect of Counter-Strike. I didn't play these that much, but I do distinctly remember buying a laptop that was not able to run CSS, and this being pretty much the last resort I had considering Roblox can run on just about anything. In the modern times though, there was pretty much only one game to turn to if you want to experience Valve's most popular franchise inside of Roblox. Counterblocks, indisputably the most successful attempt at bringing CS over to Roblox ever. With over 1 billion plays under its belt, it's arguably almost as popular as Counter-Strike itself. Now, the thing about Counterblocks is that it's not just a deathmatch game that people hop on to kill time. From my experience, the community around Counterblocks and the people playing it were just as, if not more, competitive than the people who play Counter-Strike. I go as far as to say that randoms will be more upset with you if you suck in a casual lobby in Counter Blocks than if you suck in a casual lobby in Counter Strike. I watched like 50 guys get vote kicked in the few hours that I played this game. It's it's brutal out here, man. This shit is like, this shit is the Roblox hood. My experience playing Counter Blocks was honestly dicey, more dicey than I ever expected it to be, given its popularity. Gameplay-wise, they did do a really good job at porting over all of Counter-Strike's weird quirks, but my biggest problem was that there was practically just zero response to anything that you do. Whether or not shots are actually landing is something that is telegraphed insanely poorly to the player, which kind of makes the guns feel really random. Which sucks, because obviously, they aren't. They all actually have really well-made implementations of the spray pattern system from Counter-Strike, but I feel like that entire system just goes to waste when it's kind of impossible to tell if I'm even landing my shots or not. I think missing out on those tiny details is Counterblock's biggest problem. The shell of Counter-Strike has been ported over, nearly one-to-one, -one, and on a macro scale it does a pretty good job of being a CS game. But on the micro scale, tiny details like poor visibility, not being able to tell when you're hitting shots, and footsteps not even really working how they're supposed to, makes the whole thing just feel a little bit cheap. Which is weird because, if I'm not mistaken, the team behind Counterblocks is the exact same team behind Typical Colors, and I feel like that game doesn't really suffer from any of those problems. But that might just be because TF2 by nature is a hell of a lot less competitive than CS is, and those details don't really matter nearly as much. I noticed there was an unranked competitive mode that, that you know I had to hop into, considering the 5v5 comp gameplay is pretty much the lifeblood of Counter-Strike. I gotta say, despite those grievances that I had earlier, I did have a pretty solid competitive experience in Counterblocks. The maps are well designed, the gameplay feels more or less okay, and pretty much everything that you would want to do in Counter-Strike can easily be done. As far as the quality of the people you'd be playing with, it definitely varies. In my few short comp matches, I ran into literal children who didn't even understand the concept of a bomb site. But also insane anime profile picture guys with wacky ass skins that aced every round. I noticed weirdly that people got mad at me for using grenades in this game. Like I would smoke off a site or throw a perfect flash at the enemy team and they would either tell me to stop or threaten to leave the lobby unless I played the game normally. So, yeah, using util makes you a freak in this game, I guess. From what I gather community-wise, this game is pretty much the polar opposite of typical colors. If you don't already know how to play Counter-Strike, Counterblocks is going to make zero effort to try and teach you, and you could probably play this game pretty consistently and not really pick up any of the fundamentals of playing Counter-Strike. With all of that said, though, Counterblocks is a Counter-Strike game. That's all there really is to it. It's a decent enough remake of Counter-Strike inside of Roblox that you could basically, if you want to, you know, if you're weird, count it as a proper entry to the series. Real quick before we wrap up the Counter-Strike part, I wanted to mention something else in honor of CS2 finally releasing to the public. I was searching around doing research for this video, and I found this awesome showcase by a Roblox developer named Pop-Tart Noah, who showed off this Counter-Strike 2-styled smoke made entirely in Roblox. It wraps around corners and reacts to light just like the real thing does and looks straight up insane. 
I don't even think anyone has managed to port CS2's volumetric smoke to Gary's mod yet, and I kinda doubt they ever will, so the fact that it's being done in Roblox is pretty damn funny. Honestly, stuff like this in the Roblox developer community reminds me quite a lot of the Source Engine modding community, which is pretty cool. Who knows if smokes like this will actually end up in a Counter-Strike styled Roblox game, but it's cool to see regardless, and I thought it at least deserved a mention. Beyond that though, that's pretty much all I could find for Counter-Strike experiences in Roblox, and there really isn't that much else besides counterblocks. Gary's Mod Not a Valve game, technically, but a good game, and pretty much the bread and butter of this entire YouTube channel. Gary's Mod is a weird one, because it itself is a mod of Half-Life 2, so to remake it in Roblox, you'd basically have to first recreate a bare-bones Half-Life 2 experience, and then toss a bunch of Gmod features on top of that base. It also almost exclusively borrows assets from other games to make up its core gameplay, and that isn't exactly feasible to achieve in Roblox, so it'll be pretty interesting to see how these games are going to work around that. First up, we have what I have been told is the best Gmod experience that Roblox can possibly offer. The Cool Zone. I didn't really know what to expect loading into this game, but I have been told more times than I can count that it is the best Gmod clone that has ever touched down onto Roblox, and despite my skepticism, I was pretty excited to give it a try. They say first impressions are everything, and the cool zone won me over pretty quickly by spawning me on this big ass map that was a mix between McDonald's from Counter Strike Source and TTT 67th Way from Gary's Mod. I pretty quickly noticed a lot of Gary's Mod and Half Life 2 influence in the cool zone, like these combine NPCs that you can spawn in by default, and the USP match, MP7, and gravity gun given to you when you spawn in. But there are also a lot of weird inside jokes and memes that I would assume come from the Roblox community, and that I probably have zero chance of ever understanding. And despite me not really getting them, I was happy that it was at least trying to somewhat have its own unique identity beyond just being a Gmod clone. I noticed pretty early on that this game was very, very jank, but it was jank in a good way. It was jank in more or less the same way that Gary's mod is. I don't know if that was on purpose or not, but despite not being able to actually mount content from other games like you can in Gmod, it still, somehow, managed to feel like an amalgamation of 50 different games that came together to create one big sandbox experience. There was virtually no page to spawn menu that didn't have some insane meme on it, there was a ridiculous amount of cool ass community weapons and NPCs available for you to instantly spawn into your game, and best of all, there pretty much wasn't a single loading screen in my entire few hours of playing, even when I changed maps. I know how the Gary's Mod community is, and I'm definitely guilty myself of instantly writing off Roblox pretty much every time I hear about it, but you would honestly just be doing yourself a disservice by not appreciating the way this game carries forth Gary's Mod culture and exposes it to an entirely brand new audience. The moment that stuck out to me the most was when I booted up GM Construct, equipped a USP that had been lovingly ported over from Counter-Strike 2, and tried my best to fight off a giant army of stupid-ass Roblox demo knights rushing at me with their giant swords. It was just honestly really fun and kind of stupid and made me realize that the cool zone is a lot more than just a Roblox version of Gmod. It's almost a tribute to the golden age of Gary's mod back when the game was a little less serious and basically every weapon was based off some insane meme that was going around at the time. Everything about the cool zone, from the weapons, to the maps, to the entities, and pretty much every mechanic in the game, is clearly designed with fun in mind over literally anything else. Even if it's completely ridiculous. Legalize nuclear bombs. This might sound insane to say, but I genuinely think that the cool zone is maybe the best attempt at recreating the golden age of Gary's mod in history. I recently downloaded an old build of Gmod 12 so I could play with old add-ons from way back in the day, and the feeling that I got from playing that is honestly not that far off from the feeling I got from playing this game. There's way too much to go over in this video in terms of everything that the cool zone offers, but I recommend you give it a try, because even playing by myself in solo sessions, I was having an insane amount of Gmod style fun with the cool zone, and the amount of content included in the game by default is insanely impressive. The sense of humor that the game has might not be for everyone, but look, it's 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 fun, okay? You can play with Counter-Strike 2 weapons on GM Construct and spawn in a Boeing AH-64 Apache attack helicopter. What am, what am I supposed to sit here and say that sucks? It don't. That's, that's awesome. There are definitely a lot more Gary's Mod clones that exist on Roblox, but I think the Cool Zone is undeniably the best one. 
I found another while searching named Gary's Mod Roblox Edition, and this one is definitely much more accurate to the actual Gmod experience, but it doesn't have the same personality that the Cool Zone does. It's pretty much just a one-to-one -one recreation of Gmod inside of Roblox. It did have a beautiful port of the nighttime version of GM711 in it though, which I have to salute because that map is very awesome. Finally, the last thing I'm taking a look at isn't even a Gmod clone at all. It does try to recreate a specific Gmod experience, but probably not the one you're thinking of. Traitor Town. A totally original game where a team of innocent spies try to sniff out a couple of traitor spies that are lurking among them and trying to pick them off one by one. Traitor Town is basically a one-to-one -one TTT experience, and it's insanely well made for what it is. I guess it makes sense. Uh, recreating the entirety of Gary's Mod and Roblox is a very, very tall order, and even doing something simple like the sandbox mode is probably really complicated. But porting over a single game mode like TTT is not only going to be much less of a challenge, but also result in a much more polished product, and Traitor Town demonstrates that pretty clearly. I think it's easily the most polished Gmod experience in the entirety of Roblox. Hell, I'd go as far as to say it might just be the most polished game in this entire video. It has basically everything that makes Gmod's TTT special, from the Counter-Strike source weapons to the silly-ass cosmetics, and even these funny little recreations of the default player models. Each weapon feels exactly like how it's supposed to, player movement and player combat feel spot on, and even little things have been ported over perfectly like being able to activate traitor traps from across the map. There's a pretty wide selection of fun maps to play on, some new and some old, and it blew my mind when the server would vote for a new map and literally one second later we would be on that new map with almost zero downtime. This might sound sacrilegious, but it almost feels like Roblox is more equipped as a platform to handle TTT than Gary's mod itself is at least as far as the vanilla TTT experience goes. Plus, I can almost guarantee that the process of getting into a Trader Town game is 100 times more smooth than getting into a modern TTT server in Gmod. In Trader Town, you click the play button and wait, you know, maybe 8 seconds and you're just in the game. In real TTT, you click the play button, wait around 900 hours for the Hatsune Miku player models and Call of Duty Black Ops weapons to download, and then get killed 900 times by a guy who spent $90 on a weapon. Trader Town was so accurate to the Gary's Mod TTT experience that it even had a guy mic spamming uh, like Mexican rap music or something. I'll admit that it doesn't necessarily do anything special in terms of how the game plays or mechanics or maps, and again, it's just an insanely accurate port of TTT to Roblox, but it does offer a flawless vanilla experience, which is sadly kind of impossible to even find in Gary's Mod these days. It's kind of messed up that the easiest way to have a good vanilla TTT experience is to just ignore Gmod entirely and get on Roblox. Also, as I was getting footage for this video, the guy that was playing Mexican music from earlier changed to playing uh, Pink Guy songs, like Filthy Frank. I just, I just want to give you an update on that before the video ends. I guess I left this entire thing with a newfound appreciation for Roblox, which is something that a lot of people probably thought I would never say on this channel. It definitely has its flaws as a platform, and the homepage definitely still looks like a scam website or something, but any platform that lets you play janky-ass versions of Valve games is always going to be cool in my book. I hope, if anything though, this video made you aware that there is a pretty sizable chunk of people who play Roblox who just want to share the magic of Valve's titles with as many people as possible, and that, in my opinion, is a pretty noble cause. Plus, uh, this game lets me make a shirt with a picture of the LA Beast holding a giant ass piece of candy corn on it, so yeah, this game is, this shit is awesome actually. Bless your face, if you sneeze during this video, bless you. Thanks for watching, I've been Rat Lobber. Peace. Thanks again to Raid for sponsoring this video. Remember to scan this QR code or hit the link in the description to get cool bonuses and an epic swag champion and play Raid Shadow Legends. Okay, uh, bye now for real. Thanks for watching. Peace.